Congratulations to everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Mike, how's everybody doing tonight? Everything going good? All right, all right. Getting on uh, to the comedy portion. Next next person that we got coming up is a comedian slash magician. Give it up for Paul Kilmer. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Paul, the comedy magician. You're probably not going to like this. Uh, I do magic and comedy at the same time. Uh, you probably didn't know this was happening tonight, and that's not my fault. So I will be using all of you in this job reference. That's what's going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to do my first thing. It's called the uh, paper trick. Thank you. I couldn't see anyway. Uh, there's usually a dove at the end of that, uh, but we can't light those on fire anymore. The 80s are weird. The 80s were weird. I'm not saying that I lit doves on fire, but I'm just saying some people did, and I just don't want you guys to get confused. Well, no, no, he ate them, and that was a bat. Um, so, uh, when you watch this, just understand you're probably not going to understand anything. So I'm going to do my next thing and then I'll go back into witness protection. Oh, this is great. You guys are awesome. I'm glad I came here tonight. So I'm going to tell you something deep and dark and personal about myself that was probably going to traumatize you, but it's okay because I'm a comedian and I can do stuff like that in 2023, so I just want you to be prepared. Oh man, this isn't going well. Um, so when I was nine, I was diagnosed with autism, and if you don't laugh at my jokes, you're a bad person. <laughs> And if you are a bad person, you weren't going to laugh anyway, so that's not my fault. Yeah. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Because I'm terrified right now. This is very intimidating for me. That's why I bring my Rubik's Cube places, because it helps me with my social anxiety. One way I love to solve it is just by squeezing it, and it solves. I know, it's crazy. It's, cra it's comedy magic. It's not supposed to work. We've established that I wasn't good in the beginning. But I, this isn't going to work. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, I told Frankie that I probably wasn't good and he shouldn't book me, but he did anyway. So send all your complaints to uh, Frankie Capo at... Um, at uh, gmail.com. Uh, you can find me at Paul Kilmer at the dark web. <laughs> dot, dot com. So I actually can solve a Rubik's Cube and I can actually do it without looking at it because I have no friends. And the cool thing about not having friends is that you learn how to solve Rubik's Cubes without looking at it. Now, the way I do it is I use my bag from my favorite store. Because branding is everything. <laughs> if one person laughs, I get to come back, so be careful. If I snap my... F actually, this is how I actually solved the Rubik's Cube, because my fiancé, who is a very real person and not somebody I made up for this bit, her name's Rebecca, she's told me on many occasions, please don't bring me into your comedy, and I do it anyway, because she's not here. I told her I was going to do it. Anyway, so uh, I'm really good at finding people's cards, and I'm really good at solving Rubik's Cubes, and according to her, I'm pretty good at finding the clitoris.
<laughs> and this is how you do it. First of all, you got to stand at a 45 degree horse stance like this and stick your hands out. And what you do is you open up the flip flaps and then uh, tickle the giggle bean and the whole way opens up. And if you're wondering what a giggle bean is, it's a technical term. You can look it up in Google. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a strawberry peep. Anyway, so this is what's going to happen, is, is that you walk down the hallway, um, and then you pull a book that it says Great Expectations on it. That's a book joke. That's a literary joke. I get five comedy points for that. There's no such thing as comedy points. And you're all mad, but I told you you would be. And uh, the bookcase slides to the left and always to the left, and you walk down a spiral staircase into a field, and it's moist. Because you don't want it to be anything else. And then you walk across the field, because you're wearing Crocs, and because it's my joke, you're wearing the animals, not the shoes. And there's a beaver on a stump that says, hey, I got to work in the morning. You did a good job, and that's how you find that. So I'm going to solve the Rubik's Cube now. What I do is I turn the bag over. I take out my magic wand. Some wizards went to Hogwarts. I hung out at 7-Eleven as a kid. My parents didn't care. And now I'm here telling you about it, so I think I won. <laughs> They're dead. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is say the magic words, non-gonococcal meningitis, which is the technical name for the disease known as mono. So you know that now. Don't forget who did that. I know all the medical facts, and there's nothing you can do about it. As you can see, I solved the Rubik's Cube inside the bag. I know a lot of people think that there's another Rubik's Cube in the bag, but there isn't. So we're going to move on. <laughs> that got a bigger laugh than I thought it would. So has this happened to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the crowd and pronouns? Uh, you're at, you're going to McDonald's. You go, you go to McDonald's? Like McDonald's, yeah, so, so you have Wendy's? Sonic, Applebee's, Waterburger, which is a dumb name for a restaurant. Five Guys? I like Five Guys too, but for different reasons. You don't know. Anyway. It's fine. I just, I don't know. I'm dying up here, so I'm just trying to do a good job. So, uh, what do they forget? What do they forget in your order? Everything. For me, it's just straw. If you forget the straw in your order, then you have to drink your drink like an animal. You gotta take your stupid monkey thumb and open up the cap and then you hit your brakes and then you get covered with orange Kool-Aid, which is the best drink in the world. I'll argue. I don't care. I've got 20 more minutes. There's... I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna leave. I, I, I totally am, because I got... I got a children's birthday party to do after this. But this is the straw I like to bring with me. <laughs> They'll never forget this one. Yeah. Thank you. I wish I was a better magician, but... Uh, so I want to thank you for coming. You look terrified, and I apologize. I made this for you in my basement, along with other things. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, because Frankie hasn't told me to leave yet. A couple minutes. Oh, I know. I'm going to milk this shit. <laughs> I'm going to milk it. You'll never invite me back. I have a bag. It has handcuffs, rope, uh, a billiard ball, and a knife, and some rubber gloves. <laughs> if I weren't a magician, this would be a red flag. <laughs> But I am, so you have nothing to worry about. I am a safe person. Sometimes I like to tell myself that. I've just watched a lot of true crime. So I may or may not be ending on this piece. So I want to show you guys the best thing I know how to do, which is the mystery of the three ropes. It works like this. 
It's based off an optical illusion. And what an optical illusion is, is something that you can create within an environment that produces a magical illusion. Like the relationship I had with my dad. <laughs> you remind me of my dad. That's why I made that joke. The only difference between you and my dad is that you survived. It's okay, he wrote that. As you can see, the ropes are the same up here, but different down here. You, you running the show if you leave. That makes me look bad.